Hey guys! Welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name is Kayleen and I'm your host. We're off to a crazy start already. We're 45 seconds into the podcast and we've already had an interruption. So, school starts tomorrow. It starts tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to film a proper podcast for you guys. I know I've been doing a lot of live streaming lately, uh, mostly because of time constraints and resource constraints and things. So, um, yeah, I pretty much just want to come and update you guys on the things that I've been working on. I'm going to try and do this with as few edits as possible, as few interruptions as possible. Um, so hopefully that works. Um, if you're new to the podcast, welcome. This is a small podcast about crocheting and knitting, mostly hand dyeing yarn, some spinning, and pretty much anything crafty that I've been up to lately. Um, and if you're a returning subscriber or viewer, welcome back. I hope that you are enjoying. And um, I apologize... <laughs> for my sporadic nature lately. It's just the nature of the beast, I suppose, having two small kids at home. So, uh, welcome back, everyone. So, 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 let's say so a thousand times. I feel out of practice. I've been so used to live streaming and kind of going off the cuff, not that this is scripted, but um, just kind of when I'm filming a podcast, I try to be very cognizant of how many times I say um and like because it means I have less to edit out if I say it fewer times so <laughs> or stumbling on my words if it's a live stream then I don't mind so much because it's just off the cuff that way um but yeah so I hope you guys have been doing well I hope you've enjoyed the rest of your summer uh we have had a very busy summer here uh capping off this Labor Day weekend with some illness and then a trip to the aquarium on Monday so it was a very polarizing weekend it was first very ill and then okay and it was good so um since I've spoken to you last on a formal podcast I've done a little bit of knitting I've done some machine knitting I've done a little bit of dyeing I've had at least one shop update since my last official podcast. So um, let's get into the things that I've been working on. So I have been working on Tyler socks, which I have finished, and I have them here. I'm, I'm trying not to like turn around and grab stuff off my really messy desk. So I finally finished Tyler socks. These are um, the socks that I've been working on for months. Yay! Finished. I love finished things. Um, so these I knit two at a time, cuff down. So here it is, cuff down. I did about 12 or 13 rows of ribbing, one by one regular ribbing with um, just plain stockinette foot and um, leg and a fish lips kiss heel, which is my favorite type of heel to do. It's the easiest heel to do. And yeah, it's, it's finished. These two are finished. I buckled down last week, finished them up for him. He's very excited. He now has some, what he likes to call plow socks or shoveling socks or whatever. Um, I did my best with color management. One sock, you can see here on the heel, is a few rows ahead of the other one. So once we got to the heel, once I got to the heel, it was much more obvious um, the changing of the stripes. So that's heels to toes. So you can see one toe ended up with more brown and this with more green. So, but they both started at the same exact point in the yarn. I think that's just variability in the length of stripes. So, so, <laughs> um, these are done in Jinx Yarns. This is her Rapture colorway. I feel like she comes out with this colorway a lot this time of year. Um, I think she had a shop update yesterday but it is a Bioshock inspired colorway and these are Tyler's winter socks and I'm very excited that they're finished and off my needles. So I'm glad to share those with you. So next on the list of things that I've been working on is more socks, socks and socks and socks, but these are machine knit socks. So I have been struggling a little bit with my circular sock machine. I haven't had a lot of time to work with it over the summer, not as much time as I would have liked, but um, I was working on getting the magic number. Since I've been messing around with the sock machine, I found a formula that works for little infant hats, for like a smaller size and then a larger size. And I have messed up where, where I had set the tension for socks. Because when it comes to you, this machine, they kind of set it on an average setting so that you could just start knitting socks right away. And it's hard to find information anywhere on what is an ideal setting for socks since it's so based on personal preference. 
I spent a lot of time doing things like this, where it is just a plain knit tube. So I started with my 60 stitch, 60 stitch cylinder, that's so hard to say. And then I moved up to a 72 stitch cylinder. Um, so this is a 72 stitch tube. Um, just testing like tension and flexibility and things that are important on a sock. You know, I, I like my socks to be kind of tight fitting, but I don't want them so tight that um, it's like really stretching the knitting. Um, and I, I, I really like them to fit well. Like I don't like a baggy sock. I don't like socks that are going to slide around. So I really wanted to find the exact um, formula that I liked. So I started knitting up with, this is the one, so this is the first one I did. You, if you recognize this yarn, I did another machine knit sock maybe a year ago. Uh, I purchased this yarn from Sheena of Casual Fashion Queen. She had released uh, sock sets, little sock sacks, <laughs> actually. And this was her Mermaid's Dream colorway. It matches the bag. It's um, mermaids and turtles and stuff with this nice, like, burgundy color. So it... So I'm just going to say so a lot. Why don't we keep a sew counter? I think we should. Um, but it's this lovely color. And I had, you know, enough left to make at least a pair of ankle socks. So after all of this experimentation, I decided to cast on a sock. This time I did a hung hem. So similarly to what I did in the baby hats, I just knit double the rows and then hung the hem back onto the machine. So I knit the rows, I pulled the sock inside itself, and then hung each stitch onto the machine, and then proceeded to knit the rest of the um, leg, which is a short leg, it's just an ankle sock, the short row heel, the foot, and then the toe, and I did Kitchener the toe closed successfully. I've been getting much better at that. Um, the toe seam is right across the back of the sock, so you increase and decrease like a heel for the toe, and then you are stitching up along the bottom. So you can't even see really where my stitching is, unless you notice like a break of the pattern of where the pooling is on the sock. So I did this and it almost fit. It was slightly too wide. I did wash and dry these in the dryer because that's how I would normally wash and dry my socks for super wash socks. I don't care if they go in the washer. Um, so it was a little wide at the top. Obviously, this is not ribbed and it was a little baggy and a slight bit short so the heel wanted to slip under my foot and So I decided to cast on a second one and this one I did at a slightly tighter setting and this is the magic number for me So I think it's an 18 on my machine. So if I crank the tension to the bottom, meaning make it as loose as possible and I crank up 18 clicks of the button it's so scientific, right? 18 clicks and then make my sock. I have a good tension for my foot. It hugs my foot the way I like it to. And so then it was just a matter of numbers. So I did 30 rows, hung the hem. So there's 15 rows of this cuff, uh, 15 rows, which is about just over an inch, an inch and a half maybe between the cuff and the beginning of the heel. Then we have the heel, the leg, and toe just like normal on the sock machine. And I think I did 57 rows of the foot to make it slightly longer than this. This was 55 at a looser gauge. So I did 57 on the tighter gauge to try and make up for the length and the width being slightly different. It literally is different by, let's see if I can line this up. So you can see that whoop, 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 that this sock in the back is slightly wider and this toe in the front sock overhangs. Sorry for the overexposure. This, the settings aren't exactly perfect in here because we have a very cloudy and dreary day. So the first toe overhangs this toe and you can see that it's, it's wider by a few stitches only. So it's really not wider by too much and it's longer by one or two rows. So it's not a ton of difference, but it's enough between an ill-fitting sock to differentiate between an ill-fitting sock and a properly fitting sock. So I figured out the numbers. That was one thing that I did. And then 
I was trying to decide how I wanted to do my socks because I have trouble finishing the um, cuffs. So whether I do toe down, wow, it is so overblown right now. I'm getting like this strange aura. I feel like I'm glowing. Uh, <laughs> I'm so out of practice. So I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do it and I decided I liked the hung hem because it allows me to finish the sock on the machine so I don't have to do any extra finishing. So I attached my ribber which takes a little bit extra time and I this is the sample that I did. Literally I took a, a skein of Mooney that I've had as scrap, um, put my ribber on, did the same thing, 30 rows of ribbing on the same tension. Um, you can see I've dropped stitches here. I wasn't going for precision. I was just kind of going for a general fit. And then I did a whole bunch of rows stockinette. You can see it's unraveling because I didn't finish it. Just so that I could try this on my ankle because I wanted it to fit well on my ankle but not, you know, slip around. So I wanted it to feel like it's hugging my ankle. This was a success. I decided I liked it. So I did a row of knitting. Then I started my one by one rib, hung my hem after 30 rows, and then began my knitting, like just knitting like normal. So I would do 15 rows for the leg because I like ankle socks, um, and then heel and toe. And so this I would consider after a whole ton of experimentation and messing around and figuring out formulas is my first real successful sock off my sock machine. Um, I feel like I have a lot of folks who are like, I'd kill for that machine, and um, in some ways, oh you know, yeah, it makes the time go by faster. It takes me two hours to make a sock versus two months to make a sock because I'm so slow, or versus a week, but the tension, figuring out the machine is as much work as it is to make the sock. So there's a ton of work that goes beforehand to make a successful sock. So lots of experimentation, playing around with tension, learning, you know, how many rows you need, you know, based like rows per inch and how long your foot is, the tension that would make a suitable heel and toe without um, adjusting your tension mid sock. So you want to be able to knit the foot and the heel and the toe all in the same tension. And um, also making, you know, ribbing that fits you making sure that the yarn is right, all of that. So this is my first successful sock. It is the same thing, 30 rows of ribbing, done an 18 tension. I don't think I increased the tension. I may increase the tension for the ribbing, make it on 19, and then decrease to 18 to make the rest of the sock. But 15 rows of leg, heel, 57 rows of foot, and then the toe. And then it's kitchener closed, without any problems or drop stitches. And here it is. And you can barely even see where I have Kitchenered the sock closed. So this is the Mooney colorway in my Sparkle Sock base. Nothing crazy, I don't have any more of this left, so this is not a pair, this is just <laughs> a random sock, but it's a finished sock and I'm very proud of it. So um, I can try it on my foot and show you how it looks. It fits! Look at that! Yeah! So, it fits really well. I'm really pleased with it. I do like ankle socks. I like to make longer socks for the winter, and now that I've figured out my magical numbers, I can actually do that. And make socks, instead of just making sample socks that I don't care about, you know, making a sample sock that if somebody takes it off the sock blocker, it's not going to unravel or <laughs> have this really messy cast off edge. And I really like the hung hem for the edging because it just rolls in and it makes a nice clean top to the sock. And I don't want the whole entire leg ribbing, so it'll probably be, I would probably be, I would do you know, maybe 50 rows. If I was going to do a tall sock, I would do 50 rows of ribbing, then hang the hem, so then I would have a little bit higher of a cuff, and then do maybe 25 rows or 30 rows for the leg before I went down to the heel and toe. So I am happy about that. I'm happy to finally have that finished. So now let me share with you my one work in progress, 
which is a knitting project. If you've been following me on social media, if you follow me on Instagram, um, then you would have seen I am still making progress on my exploration station, which I do have here. This is my utterly adorable knits bag that I got on a D stash, and inside is my exploration station. Now I cannot stretch this out at all because it will fall off the needles. It is getting very large very quickly. But I will show you is where I'm at. So the last time I talked to you guys on a formal podcast or even on the live stream I think I showed you this, I was at the last two repeats of the brioche. And I was going to do a tutorial because I make these plans to do these things uh, of how to do brioche the way I knit but I decided not to do it and ha wait and do it on this because if I wait for too long while I am, you know, doing a bajillion other things, I'm never going to get around to it and then I never will knit on this again. So I have to do that on my own time with other yarn, like scrap yarn or spare yarn that I have around um, to show the brioche technique. But I did move past the brioche and now I am officially... A little over halfway done with the sassy slips section here. I think there are six repeats of the pattern total and I am just over the one two three fourth. I'm on the final pass of the fourth repeat so I have two more to go. I am <laughs> dwindling down on yarn. I did not start with full skeins of yarn. Bad. Don't do that because then you scare yourself. But this is how much I have left. I have a significant amount left of these two colors. Um, thankfully, I don't need to use this green anymore. This is the last section that uses this green. This was a one of a kind colorway. It was Professor Sprout. It was um, an experimental colorway. It wasn't, it was just me playing in the dye pot trying to figure out the cunning formula that I wanted to use for cunning. Um, so the next section after Sassy Slips, I am using these two colors together for the Nothing But Knit. This is Ron Weasley and Lav, and I'm a little nervous about Lav, so we'll see how that goes. I may not do as many repeats. And then of course the final um, color, needle stuck in here, um, is the Sparkle Dark Brown that was in the prongs kits, but I saved this game for myself. It's a little hard to see the sparkle because of how the light is shining, but you can see it. Um, and it's just a dark black-brown color. I have a ton left, but I hear you use a ton of yarn, and this was a full skein. So I wanted to be sure that I had enough to do the chevron border. Uh, my aim for this project is to have it finished by Rhinebeck, so I want to be able to wear this to Rhinebeck. I am going. I will be arriving Friday. I'm staying until Sunday and driving home. Um, so I'd like to arrange a meetup for anybody who would like to meet up who's going. I have to talk to my compatriots <laughs> that I'm staying with to see uh, what everybody's plans are and who will be around when. But I know there's lots of podcast meetups on the hill, so to speak. I've never been to the hill, so I don't know what it is or what it looks like or where it will be. But that is the plan. I'd like to do that. So um, if you're interested in meeting up, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I'd love to meet you guys. All right, and then the last thing I have is this acquisition. This is from Adela's Cro Crochet Cottage. Adela Colvin, she is a friend. She is a fellow dyer, and this is her steampunk colorway. I love this color. Um, this is on her um, Cottage Dazzle Base, which is a 92 percent superwash merino, 8% lurex, which is a sparkling nylon. And this is the base that I think, so indie dyers, we all use very similar bases. And I was thinking about getting a base like this versus the Stellina base. Um, it has a similar feel. There's really not much of a difference in softness, but the visual impact of the lurex versus the Stellina is really it's really pronounced I mean this is a dark color and in person you can see all the sparkle it is so hard to pick up on camera so you can see all the sparkle in there this is very sparkly yarn here yeah I think you can see a little see how it's twinkling here 
I'm looking in the viewfinder, I'm sorry. Um, but you can see how it's twinkling. This is much more obvious sparkle, um, just based on the way that the yarn is made. So the Lurex is, it's, um, first of all, let me just talk about this yarn before I start talking about shop stuff. Uh, I have been waiting to get my hands on a skein of steampunk for a very long time. This is one of Adela's most popular colorways. And <laughs> she was showing off this base and I'm like, I need this much sparkle in my life. First of all, whatever she washes it in, it's delicious. I freaking love this stuff. I don't even know what it is. It just smells really good. <laughs> <laughs> and so this color, it's going to be hard to see here because my lighting is so poor today, but this color is um, a nice vibrant blue with purple. So the dark sections that you're seeing there aren't black. They're actually a very, very, very dark purple and it is absolutely stunning. And this lighting is doing it no justice. <laughs> Sorry, Adela, if you're watching this, um, but I love this base. I love Adela. I love her yarn, and um, this is one of her most magical colorways. So if you ever see, if you go to Adele's Crochet Cottage on Etsy, I apologize for the change in lighting. We have a very, very rainy day here today. Um, if you ever catch one of her updates, see if you can order a skein of Steampunk because you will not be disappointed. It is one of the most gorgeous skeins of yarn that I've held in my life. If I can try and get a picture, I'll try and pop it here somewhere. Um, maybe I can have Adela send me a nice, a nice photo of this because this is not doing it any justice. So I was thinking of switching my sparkle base from the Stellina, which is this one, which is very sparkly. I mean, you can see all the sparkle to this base, which is the Lurex base. So, so it has more merino, it has the Lurex, which is a sparkling nylon, and then this has the nylon plus Stellina. So it has a little bit less well, I don't know. I, they're both very, very sparkly. I don't know. Okay. So in terms of other things that I've been doing, uh, I've been really trying to dye as much as I humanly possibly can. Um, let's see if I can turn some brightness up so we get a little bit more light coming from this direction. Um, it's been very tough. Um, not only because, you know, the kids are around and it's hard to do dye work when the kids are around and we're very limited on space. I mean, you can see behind me my work. There's a huge pile of undyed yarn on this. I have two custom orders. One is going out. No, well, they're both going out today, but one, this red one, which is right there, is a super, super secret. It's a super secret for the person who knows what, who, who it's for, but um, that's going out today. Um, I just felt so incredibly overwhelmed with, you know, my mood was so depressed, and I'm okay, by the way, and I want to say thank you to anybody who has reached out to me, um, who, or who has left me comments, I really, really appreciate it, I do have a very good network, what is going on with this light, and now I'm really glowing, okay, um, I do have a really good network uh, of family and friends, and I do reach out when I need help. And I do talk with my husband about it. We both are on the same page about everything. Uh, and we are both not without our own issues in terms of like anxiety or depression. <laughs> and um, so I want to say uh, thank you very, 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 very much to anybody who reached out. Um, I really appreciate it. So anyway, being in a depressed mood or an anxious mood really doesn't make you want to do work. It makes you just want to sit there and feel bad, and then you feel bad for not doing anything, so you feel worse. It's this negative perpetuating cycle, blah, blah, blah. I'm feeling in a better space now, trying to get lots of dye work done. That's the main message of this whole thing. So um, not last week, but the week before, I did a big shop update of silk, so a 50-50 silk blend. There's still a few skeins left. Um, if you feel like you've missed it, you haven't missed it. It's a little bit of a pricier base, I know, but it is extremely soft. If you've ever worked with a silk base, the drape is unmatched. Um, you, it, it, it's like butter. It's so soft and so drapey. It, it's like the ultimate shawl material, and it is. It has become my new favorite over my MCN. The red skein that's here is done in my MCN, and I absolutely love, love, love the Lux base. But um, this silk base is just like otherworldly. So, 
excuse me. This week I decided to do my normal dye, which is on Everyday Sock, which is my most popular base. I love this base. It is so incredibly soft and lovely, so I'm going to show you a few skeins that I dyed up. I dyed on Merino DK, which is my newer DK base. It's 115 grams, and I also dyed up on Everyday Socks, so I did four and four for each color. Um, and I have them. There's some here that are still drying. This bottom is a Halloween color. It's still in progress, so I'm not going to show it. We have his mother's eyes and beau baton, and I have some here that I can show you close up. I don't know how good this lighting is going to be for me showing you color accuracy, but I'm going to do my best. Ooh, I have this gigantic... Does anybody else reuse these? Um, I have these gigantic... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Bags that I have from Stop and Shop that are just reusable shopping bags. And I use it to hold yarn and packages. So when I go to the post office, I literally fill up these reusable shopping bags and bring them to the post. You can't come in. You can't come in. You can't come in. There's stuff by the door. All right. I really am done for the day. Uh, it's only 1 o'clock. Cece's having a really hard day. Everybody tells me, like, oh, she's so cute. She's on the podcast. She's so cute. She's certainly showing her dark side today. It is not awesome. Okay. So let's continue. The shop update information, so shop update will be Saturday at 1 o'clock, like it usually is. That's my normal update time. Um, I am going to have a lot of skeins that are here, so in Simple D, not Simple DK, Merino DK, which is my newer um, DK base. It's a four-ply, 100% superwash merino, and it is 115 grams, so it's slightly more. It's 250 yards, and it's extremely soft. So I really, really love it, and I hope you guys like it too. Um, there are some skeins, I think maybe one or two skeins, in the shop right now on this base, but I will have more. So I have Beaubaton, which you can see in the back. It's on the top shelf. And then also right here, I have it on Merino DK, and I also have it on Everyday Sock, which is buried somewhere in this bag. And then I have a couple of colorways that I haven't named yet. So I had a custom dye request uh, for a photo, and if I remember to, I'll try and put the picture up. Uh, but this is the color that came of it. So it is a, it's showing a pretty true to color there. It is a deeper uh, purple with some like light kind of teal colors and light blues, light purple, dark purple, black, gray, green, it pretty much is a, sh a smorgasbord color. So this is on the Merino DK base. And then I also have it on the Everyday Sock base, which is this. So I have four skeins. I have two on the DK base and four on the Everyday Sock base available. Put this here so you can see. So this is it. So this doesn't have a name yet. I still have to come up with something before Saturday. Because it was tied from a photo, it wasn't um, it wasn't like a preconceived idea that I had. It was something kind of spur of the moment. And then I have another color here, which is also unnamed. It is also on Everyday Sock and on Simple DK. So I mean Merino DK. It's on top. That's the Merino, and then the bottom is Everyday Sock, but it is really vibrant blues and greens. It's really hard to tell the colors right now. I apologize for that. Um, I'll try to describe them to you. Uh, we have some really deep and vibrant blues, um, yellows and greens, lighter aquas, um, and lighter kind of powdery blues. So it's kind of a warm and cool mixture, warm and cool tones. And again, this one doesn't have much of a name yet. I haven't decided. I don't know if this will be kind of like a Halloween name. I don't know. I haven't quite decided. Uh, and then we have some His Mother's Eyes on Everyday Sock and Simple DK. This is a more understated color. And then down here is a Halloween color that's not yet named. So I have to do another pass through the dye pot with that. I'm not liking how some of the tones are looking. So I am going to do a glaze over the top, which will hopefully color correct some of the issues that I feel like I'm having there. You know, so Saturday at one o'clock will be the update. I hope to see you guys there. 
Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I have a lot of yarn to dye. I mean, you can see all this stuff that's on the desk. I have about 12, 150 gram skeins of Lux. I have two bags of Lux. I have about two to three bags of Sparkle. I have some sock blanks. I have everyday sock here. I have a couple cones of everyday sock that are just sitting around. I have a ton of uh, DK, Merino DK to dye. And then I have one custom order to do on worsted weight, which I haven't gotten to yet. Sorry, Sloan. But that will get done uh, later this week. So I have tons of things to dye. I still have a ton in the shop. You can see here, this shelf right here is a bunch of sock blanks. So if you haven't checked out the sock blanks that are in the shop, please do. I have some watermelon sock blanks that are still available. Some rainbow sock blanks that are still available. Um, the Flu Network. Uh, I saw a pair of socks done by someone who uh, did the Flu Network. And they came out beautifully. So if you haven't seen that post, go check it out on Instagram. I think I posted it yesterday, which was Tuesday. <laughs> um, anyway. Okay. So the last thing that I have to do right now is to pull winners for the one-year anniversary giveaway. Yay. So let's do that. I did have it set up on my phone already so that I could see it. I already locked the threads. So let us see here. So for the first thread, we had 61 entries. The first giveaway thread was for a skein of Beaubaton and a five skein mini skein set. All of those things are sitting up here, like ready to go. And there it is. So this is a picture of the prize. Sorry, you can't really see that. So it's one skein of Beaubaton with the five mini skeins. And there are 60 entrants. There are 61 total posts. So I'm gonna have Siri pick a random number between two and 61. Siri, can you choose a number between two and 61? Answer is 12. So number 12 is the winner for that. Let me look here. Number 12 is Mara Girl 8. So this was the question was how long have you let your longest whip go? And she said going on eight months a blanket I started in November 2016, slow and steady. So Mara Girl 8, Hopefully you are right there, there you are. Can you please um, contact me via Ravelry message and send me your um, shipping, <laughs> your shipping information. I am happy to ship that prize along to you. Congratulations. And let us go to the next one. So prize thread number two has 42 entrants and prize thread number two was for the Misty Mountain Makers set which was a skein of her Candyland colorway and also a bat of fiber. So there's the prize pack and I'm going to have Siri pick a random number between 2 and 43. Siri, can you choose a number between 2 and 43? That would be 13. So number 13 is the winner. Let us see, let us see, let us see. Okay, so TJ's Twisted Threads, <laughs> you have won this prize. So the question here was asking, what is your favorite base to work with? Whether it is spinning, knitting, crochet, weaving. Um, and so TJ says, it depends on the weight. If we're talking fingering weight, I would say my favorite is an 80-10-10 merino cashmere nylon because I like how soft it feels. But if it's a worsted, I prefer 100% merino because I like how squishy it is. So um, thanks so much for entering TJ, TJ's Twisted Threads. She's a long time watcher of the podcast. Um, she's chatted in live before. Uh, please get in touch with me via RAV message to let me know your shipping information and I'll get that off to you as soon as possible. All right, and then 
the final thread, the grand prize thread. Actually, these were all pretty comparable in terms of prize. Each were around 200 grams of product. So um, this is for the Woolen Vine and Primrose Yarn Company collaboration. So this is the prize here. If you can see the photo, it's still really blown out. There we go. Uh, here is the photo. It is a two skein set, both on an MCN base. And for this thread, I had 56 posts, so there were 55 entrants. And I will have a uh, Siri pick a random number between 2 and 56. Siri, can you choose a number between 2 and 56? 22. All right, here we go. It is 22 is the lucky winner. And let us scroll, 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 21, 22, Dara B. Creations. So this, um, you are the winner, congratulations, Dara B. Creations. And the question was, uh, what color family, if you could only wear one color or color family for the rest of your life, what would you wear? And she said purple. I didn't even have to think about that one. So Dara B. Creations, there you are. Can you please contact me uh, via RAV message, send me your shipping information, and I will get that prize package out to you as soon as possible. Um, so thank you to everybody who entered. Um, thank you to everyone here who has stuck with me for the last year or so, even through these weird kind of like half here, half not here times. Um, I really appreciate it. I love sharing these things with you, and I can only hope to grow this channel and grow this community more, so just the most humblest of thanks and love and just it's 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 fall it's the time of year just to feel even more thankful so um i love you guys <laughs> you guys make this all worthwhile anyway so i'm just gonna wrap this up now uh it is it's taking me a little longer to film this than i wanted but i hope that you guys enjoyed it i hope you you have enjoyed seeing the things that i've done over the last few weeks um, and I hope to do more live streams. I'd like to try and do a live stream on a weekend where more of you guys can attend and just watch because normally the best time of day for me to do a live stream is during nap, which is the middle of the day. And for most people, that means you're at work. <laughs> so it is not exactly the easiest time to watch a live stream. So if I could do it on the weekend, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I will see you guys soon. Have a great week, weekend, and I hope to see you Saturday for the update and that's pretty much it go out get some pumpkin spice lattes because they're out pumpkin spice is out everybody go crazy <laughs> um, anyway. oh i'm entertaining myself now all right have a great week great weekend and i'll see you in my next video bye